Hi there, this is Lindsay with Off the Beaten Hook, and today I'm gonna crochet with you this beautiful granny square. I use this granny square for my airy cardigan, um, but obviously granny, square, granny squares have endless options. Um, let me show you what yarn I'm using. I'm using a Malabrigo worsted weight yarn. You're going to need three different colors for this center portion of the granny square and then um, a main color. This is specifically for the cardigan. If you're just doing the granny squares, you're gonna need four different colors um, and you're gonna use them randomly in different color combinations. With my three colors, I ended up with six different um, color combinations. So really beautiful granny square. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using a six and a half millimeter hook. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this color combination for this tutorial. All right, so go ahead and grab your first color. I'm gonna go ahead and set this out of our way and zoom in a little bit more. You're gonna begin with your color A, the first color, and you're gonna start by making a magic circle. And we're gonna crochet six bobble stitches into that magic circle. Go ahead and slip knot onto your hook. So I've got my slip knot and then I am going to chain one before I start putting my first bobble on there. Right, so to bobble, you are going to yarn over and insert into that magic circle and pull up a loop and you're gonna do that same thing four times. That was one, so we're gonna do that again. So yarn over, push that through the magic circle, yarn over and pull up a loop, that's two. You're gonna have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert into the magic circle, snatch up a loop from the back, and one more time for four times. Okay, so you're gonna have nine loops on your hook. Then you are going to yarn over and pull through all nine loops on your hook. Okay, take a chain and do that again. You do that six times all together through this magic circle. So we'll do it together one more time here and then we'll go a little quicker. So yarn over, straight through that magic circle, yarn over and pull up a loop for one. Two, three, four. Okay, so once you have nine loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all of those loops. There's your bobble. You're gonna close it with a chain. All right, so we're gonna do that six times. bobble, yarn over, pull through all three, or I'm sorry, all nine, and take a chain. All right, so we have six bobbles, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you can go ahead and close up that magic circle, so pull on that yarn tail nice and tight to close it up. Okay, and then we are going to slip stitch into that very first stitch to close this magic circle. A slip stitch to that very first stitch and fasten off. So yarn over and pull that through. And take your scissor snips and you're gonna snip that. And leave enough to weave in your end. Go ahead and close that up. All right, so that is row one. Make sure you don't have a hole in the middle there. All right, so round one. All right, so go ahead and bring in your second color. So for the second one, we'll be doing this round. Some more bobble stitches. So I'm going to bring in my new color. So go ahead and slip knot onto your hook for round two. All right, so for round two, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making 
basically this is an increase round. So we've got six bobbles in this round one. Number two, second round, we're gonna have 12 bobbles. So we're gonna be placing two bobbles in the chain spaces, in the six chain spaces all the way around. So you can rejoin your yarn wherever you want. I like to rejoin it right in this one right prior to where I fastened off so that I can actually weave this tail in as I go. And it, it saves me some time from having to weave in a bunch of tails later. So I'm gonna put my hook into that, that first chain space there and I'm going to slip, slip stitch to join that new color. All right, so take one chain. Now it's gonna be that same bobble. We're gonna be doing two of those into that same space. We're gonna do two of the bobbles that we did um, with the gray. So yarn over, two, three, four. Okay, chain one. We're gonna do another bobble into that exact same space. Chain one, all right? So we're gonna do that little combo six times all the way around. So as you go into this next one, one little trick to weave in less ends later is to hold on to these and crochet over them. So you can kind of, to work them into your project a little bit. So I'll show you how I do that here. So I'm moving on to this next chain space, this next one over. Okay, I'm gonna do a bobble right into that as I'm holding those yarn tails. Okay, another bobble into that same spot. Okay, so you're sort of weaving those in as you go along. All right, so there we've got two chain spaces used. So now in this next chain space, you can kind of spread it apart. It's pretty easy to see it. And it creates this little triangle in between your bobble stitches. I'm gonna hold this behind and, and weave this in under one more of my um, bobble pairs here. So through that next chain space, do a bobble. Okay, one more in that same spot. I'm gonna drop those to the back now so I can weave them in going the opposite direction at the end. All right, so go ahead and do that. Uh, bobble pair three more times in these next three chain spaces. All right, that's my final bobble. Close that up. Now I am going to join that round together by making a slip stitch into that very first stitch of the round. Slip stitch, okay, and then fasten off that color. All right, so that is round two, okay. For round three, I'm gonna be doing this dark green, kind of this dark teal color. So go ahead and pull in your third color of yarn. Slip knot onto your hook. You're gonna rejoin in any of the chain spaces around. Just pick any one. You're gonna just weave these all in at the end anyway. So I am going to go right through this one. So this is gonna be a pair of two double crochets in every single chain space around. So you kind of have these, we just did these little bobble pairs. We're gonna be placing double crochets in between every single bobble stitch around. So rejoin in any one of those chain spaces with a slip stitch. 
okay, and chain one. And you're gonna place two double crochets into that exact same space. One, two, okay, and then you're going to chain one, and you're gonna place two double crochets into the next chain space. Chain one, two double crochets into this next chain space and in each chain space all the way around. two double crochets in my final chain space. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and join with a slip stitch to my first double crochet and fasten off. Okay, so there we are after round three. All right, so to finish it up, we are going to now turn the circle into a square with our final color. So go ahead and pick up your final color. You're going to slip knot onto your hook and we're going to begin in any chain space. So you've got your combo of your two double crochets and then a chain space, two double crochets, chain space all the way around. So go ahead and pick up in any one of those chain spaces and we're gonna start straight away by making our very first corner. So go ahead and add your yarn by making a slip stitch, tightening that down to the back and chain one, All right? So to make our corner, we're going to begin by making three double crochets into that same space. One, two, three, then we are going to chain two and make three more double crochets into that same space. One, two, three, and that is our corner. Now what you're gonna do is place three double crochets in this next chain space, and then three double crochets into the chain space thereafter. You're not going to chain in between, you're just gonna continue straight away from this last double crochet you made and make two double crochets into this next space. I'm sorry, three double crochets into this next space. So one, two, three. Do another three double, three double crochet cluster into this next chain space. One, two, three. All right, so now we are going to make our next corner. So we've just completed this corner and these two clusters. We're gonna make our next corner in this next space right here. So again, to make the corner, you're gonna place three double crochet. One, two, three. Chain two for the corner and three more in that same space, double crochet. One, two, three. Okay, so that is our second corner. So you can kind of see the square coming together here. This is our first side. We're gonna repeat that all the way around for all four sides. So you'll be doing, for the second side here, you'll be placing a three double crochets in this space, three double crochets in this space, and then another corner. Three double crochets here, three double crochets here, and then your final corner. Three double crochets here, 
three double crochets here and then you will close up that granny square with a slip stitch into your very first stitch. Okay, so go ahead and carry on with that pattern. So I'm going straight into this next chain space with three double crochets. All right, this next one is another corner. So begin by making three double crochets into that same place. Three double crochets into this next chain space. All right, here we are at our final corner in this next chain space. So three double crochets. Two chains, one, two. Three more double crochets into that same space. All right, so now we are almost all the way around. You've got all four corners. We're going to finish off with three double crochets here, three double crochets here. Right, so we've made it all the way around. We're going to slip stitch to that first double crochet of that round and fasten off. Tighten that down and there you have it. So you can kind of I'll tuck all these behind so you can sort of see this is actually a really good example of how important it is to block your granny squares. This one is not blocked yet, obviously this one is. You can see very very different shapes so you want to block them into a really nice square we're blocking this into a, a four inch square for the cardigan that i make with these to demonstrate for you how to do the flat slip stitch this technique is used to join granny squares in a really nice flat way um, there's other techniques to join granny squares. All of them have their place. This one is really nice when you need the squares to lay flat um, and you don't want any sort of texture or ridge. Um, it just creates a really beautiful finish. So I will show you how to do the, um, the uh, flat slip stitch going vertically and then I'll finish it up by showing you how to do it uh, across horizontally as well and uh, specifically so that you know how to handle your your corners in between when you're joining them in the cardigan you will be finishing all of your squares you'll be joining all of your squares vertically first and then you will join them all horizontally all right so let's go ahead and get started now in the pattern if you're watching this tutorial for the pattern you will be using i guess if you want and the pattern is written to where you'll be using your main color which is this final round of the granny square you'll join them in that same color you certainly could use a contrasting color if you wanted for the cardigan but for this tutorial i'm actually going to be using this um, contrasting color so that it's easier for you to see what the finish will actually look like so for this tutorial, I am using the, the dark teal color, all right? So I'm going to remove these ones for now so I can go ahead and zoom in a little bit and show you how to do this technique. All right, so for my granny squares, I have, um, my corners are a chain two. So that's how I'm gonna be demonstrating how to join with, the, with a chain two in the corner. You're going to make sure that your Granny squares are face facing you, so the right side facing you, and you'll wanna use the same size of hook that you used to actually make your granny square. The only exception to that would be if your slip stitches are, um, are too tight. You, wanna, you do wanna join them pretty loosely. Um, slip stitches naturally are a, a tighter stitch and you don't want your project to start, you know, kind of puckering in in the middle like this. You want to make sure they stay nice and square. So I'm, these are a four inch 
granny squares and we want them to remain that way. So if you do find that you're just having a lot of trouble um, crocheting them loosely, then I would recommend uh, going up by a half or a full size if needed, if that's just easier for you to do that. All right, so go ahead and begin by making a slip knot onto your hook. And we are going to be crocheting these flat like this. Again, we're gonna start in the corners and move up. We are going to be working through the back loops only. So what you're going to do is you're gonna find your chain two on your first square on the right here. And we are going to insert under the second one. So here, we've got one here and one here. We're gonna insert into this one. Front to back through that back loop only. Okay, you're going to make sure your working yarn is underneath. I'll show you that a little closer in a minute, but I just kind of move mine up like this to make sure it stays underneath the project. You don't want it over top like this. You want it behind, okay? So find that corresponding stitch on this corner. So we have the chain one here and the second chain here. We're going to be going under that second chain, back loop only from front to back this way, okay? All right, so now you've got your slip stitch on and your one loop from each of your squares. You're bringing your working yarn from the back, yarn over and complete the slip stitch, which pulls your yarn through all three of those. It's a little awkward on the first one, but it'll get a little easier. Tighten that down just a little bit. All right, so now you have your two corners joined and I'm just gonna continue that same stitch working over top of my working yarn through the back loop only of each of my stitches. So back loop only on this square, coming over your working yarn through that back loop only front to back of the second square. Yarn over, pull through all three. All right, so you've got two of your slip stitches here. Continue on to the next one. You're going front to back through that back loop only of your edge. Front to back, back loop only of that next stitch. Yarn over, pull through all three. Next stitch. Back loop only, back loop only. And you can see how I'm keeping my working yarn to the very back. Working kind of over top of it. All right, so go ahead and continue on in this way all the way up. So what it's gonna start looking like. You see how it creates this really nice flat stitch all the way up through the middle. You'll really see it coming together here. So go ahead and continue on. I'm gonna make my way up and I'll meet you at this these chain spaces up here on the corner and show you how to handle that. All right, I'm on my final stitch right before the chains in the corner and go ahead and make your um your your final slip stitch of these two squares going vertically into that next chain so here we are on the corner up here we've got one chain here and one chain here for our two chain corner we're going to make our final one just in that very first chain that comes next in the same way through that back loop of the chain. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, nice. So it's a really nice, flat, beautiful look. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to join in these next two. We're gonna just carry, carry on in the same method. Um, so we have got our next corner here, two chains, chain here, chain here. We are going to begin our next slip stitch in this second chain. So it's the same one that you started on this side, this chain and this chain for the corner. So you're sort of gonna be, not necessarily skipping, but of the two, you're gonna do the second one back here, right? Let's go ahead and start straight away. All right, and locate that also that second chain on this one. So here's the first chain, here's the second chain. We're going to that second chain of that corner. Okay, still your working yarn is behind you. Yarn over, pull through all the stitches or all the loops on your hook, okay? So now you've joined these next two squares. Go ahead and continue on just as you made your way up these first two, and I will meet you at the end of this square. All right, I'm on my last stitch right before the chain corner. I'm lay these out for you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make my last flat slip stitch into that very next chain. Pull it through. Okay, so however many squares you're working on, you're gonna make your way vertical and just connecting all of them for all of them vertically, just straight up. Okay, so I'll go ahead and snip this, and we will give you a, um, a visual of how to do them horizontally as well. So there you have that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to meet you again right here in the middle. I don't think I need to show you how to do this whole part again but this one is the one that I want to address what do you do when you get to the middle so go ahead and um, slip knot back onto your hook or pause the video or do whatever you need to do and rejoin me here but I'm gonna go ahead and join the beginning just as I did over here at the very beginning of the tutorial and I'm gonna go up 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 and I will stop right around in here and I'll show you how to handle leaping over that um, that vertical slip stitch line and continue on this way. So I will see you there. All right, guys, we have arrived at the kind of the cross section of our very first line of slip stitches going up and then we kind of shifted our work and we're making our way up this way. So technically this is the horizontal line of our project. And I have one more slip stitch to do before I make it to the chain area in the middle. So go ahead and make my slip stitch there. Now this next stitch that we're gonna do is going to be in that second chain of this original two chain corner of this granny square. So if you remember, we worked our first line up this way and we skipped, I can find something else to point with here. We skipped over a couple of chains as we did that. We skipped this, this is the two chain corner of the granny square, there's a chain here and there was a chain here. As we went up, we, we just left this one aside and we continued to work through this second one. Well now, as we're working up this way, that chain, we wanna make sure we work through that chain as we go over the middle here, okay? And it's the same with these ones. Okay, this is the corner here that we worked from the granny square, there's a second chain here that makes this granny square corner. Hope that that is helpful. So I'm going to be continuing my slip stitch into this chain and the back loop of this chain 
right here. So that's where I'm placing my next one. So I'm going into that back loop of that next chain that we didn't work the first time. Okay, still have my yarn coming up from behind. I'm working in that back loop of that chain on the other granny square. Grabbing my yarn, pulling it through, okay? So that completes all of the stitches along these two edges of these granny squares. Now to hop over the top, and pull, I had a lot of slack going on there. <laughs> to hop over the top of our very first line, I am going to chain one. Okay, I'm gonna tighten this down. All right, so I'm chaining one. Okay, that's gonna bring us over the top of the corner and I'm going to place my next slip stitch into this chain in the corner and this chain in the corner of the next two and then we'll continue on, okay? So let me show you that. So go ahead and take our hook. We're gonna put it through that back loop of this chain I'm gonna put it through the back loop of the chain right here. Okay, pulling up our working yarn from behind. Yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, and that completes joining the corner of those four granny squares. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more stitches with you here and then we'll take a look at our progress. We're just continuing on through the back loops of these two granny squares. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my way up and I'll meet you at the end of this, this row here. Okay guys, we've made it to the final stitch right before the corners. I'm going to make my last stitch in that first chain of the corner. So here you've got this chain and this chain, which make up this corner of this granny square. So I'm gonna take my final stitch through that back loop, of that chain and the corresponding chain on this one, yarn over and pull through. Okay, let's take a look. And there you have it, the flat slip stitch. It just creates this really beautiful flat join. And again, when you're using the same color as you do in the cardigan pattern that I use these granny squares for, it is basically an invisible, an invisible seam. It just blends right in. And there you have it. So let's go ahead and cover the seaming of the cardigan, the method for the seaming, okay? So I'm gonna actually use my handwritten diagrams for the different sizes of the cardigan because it's a lot easier to show you up close than it is kind of just flipping the cardigan around itself. So go ahead and based on the size that you're making, you can refer to the diagram in the written pattern. This is the size that I'm making right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that to show you the method for the seaming. So you're going to lay your granny squares out flat according again to the size that you're making. This is the main cardigan, okay? This is the back panel here, and these are the, the two front panels. And then it's going to get folded in half. And then you'll make two sleeves for each one based on the size that you chose. This is sort of a, a recipe pattern. So even though I make recommendations for each of the sizes, I want you to, to look at the size chart on the pattern and decide how big you want yours to be width-wise, how cropped you want it or how long, and then of course how long and how, um, how large you want the circumference of the sleeves to be. So this is how you will construct it based on that, okay? So I laid out my all my granny squares for my sleeves and my main panel. 
all right, in the, just like this, okay? So then what I do is I do all of the vertical seaming first, and then I come back and I do the horizontal seaming. Okay, so for my sleeves, I just started on the edge of the, these first two um, rows of squares here, and I went up one, then I went up this one here, and then I went up this one here, okay? And then I went down this way on the sleeves, okay? And then I'll show you actually, because I have a panel for the sleeves, you'll basically, you'll just fold it in half and then with the right side facing, you'll seam up. This edge will match up with this edge and you'll seam it into a tube before you put it on the sweater. Okay, now for the front and the back panel area, you've, you've got them all lined up just like this in the diagram. And again, in the same way, I started right here. Okay, I seamed all the way up, all eight. I guess that's gonna be 16, but in the middle of, you know, this kind of row of eight granny squares, okay? Then right here, this is the little opening for the neckline and for the front. Okay, we're seaming up these four, these four, and then finally, all the way up these eight, okay? So now you actually have the whole thing connected. All of your squares are connected by a bunch of gaps in between, okay? Now, what I did next is I folded the granny squares in half before I went this direction, right? Because these front panels are going to be connected with your back panels once you fold it in half. So what I did before I folded it is I started right here and I seamed these shoulder, these, these four, this creates the shoulder seam right here. And then I fastened off and I started again right here and I seamed across here. Okay, so those are the shoulders. And that is where you're going to fold it in half. So right now, again, you have it where your granny squares are facing you, the right side is facing you. So you're going to fold it in half, keeping the right side on the outside. And now that is where I'm at right here. So I'm gonna show you where I'm at. So these were these, these two rows right here are these two right here, okay? This row here and this row of squares here are these. Okay, and I fold it in half so they're laying on top of the back panels. This is the wrong side and I still have my right side facing out. Okay, so now I will use my actual um, squares here to show you some tips on how I get these seamed across this way all in one row. Okay, I've already done it so that I can show you. So basically I folded it in half so that you can visualize this continues along to the back, right? Cause it's all connected, comes around and connects here. Okay, so instead, I mean, you can do it how you want, but instead of going seaming, 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 all of these separately and then folding it and attaching them, I just went in one long row. So again, you can do it however you want, but this is how I did it. So I folded it in half and then I began here and it went all the way around back and ended here, okay? Then I did the same, oops, I did the same thing on this row all the way back and around and ended here, okay? But what I wanted to show you next before you got going too far is to remind you that you're gonna have an armhole where this next one is. Right, you're gonna have your armholes coming out here. So you don't wanna go here, 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 here and keep going all the way around and then have this teeny tiny little armhole. So I just wanna remind you on these ones, you will just seam across these two in the front, okay? Or however many you have and these two in the front and you're gonna leave this armhole, okay? So at that point, you'll flip it over and you'll do this final row, these last, you know, this last row just across the back. All right, so now you basically have it seamed up to where it is right now. So what you'll do on the armhole is you will start from the bottom and seam up to wherever 
your armhole needs to be. So based on the size that you're making for your armhole, you need to make sure you're leaving the proper amount of stitches for that. So let me show you how to determine that, okay? So I have my sleeve here. And what I'll do is whatever size you're making it, if the construction is the same. So again, we'll leave the right side facing out and fold it in half and, and seam this up into a tube along here. Okay, so my four inch squares, I'm doing three four inch squares for the circumference of my sleeve. So four, eight, 12 is the circumference of my sleeve. Okay, so this needs to be 12 inches around. So lying flat, you're gonna be folding it in half. That makes the 12, you're folding the 12 inches in half. So now I have a six inch opening right here for my sleeve. So basically you wanna make sure you've got six inches right here, which is where you're gonna attach your sleeve, okay? So it's gonna be a visual. Again, I had a 12 inch um, edge, which I'm folding in half into a two, but I'm seaming close. So now I have a six inch edge. I'm gonna match it up over here. And I need this to be six inches as well. Okay, so I just left mine kind of open right here. I haven't fastened off yet because I didn't do the exact measurements. But basically you have, um, for whatever size you're making, you're gonna do that that same kind of calculation. So it might be seven, it might be, you know, well, it won't ever be seven. It's obviously, sorry, it's gonna be in, <laughs> um, you know, multiples of four. So I just wanted to kind of give you a visual and then what you're gonna do is take your, um, your, your uh, flat slip stitch and you'll just go all the way around the sleeve that way. All right, so final little just artistic note as you're constructing your sleeve as you're adding your sleeve onto your main cardigan as you can line these up however you want they might lean up depending on again the circumference of your sleeve your granny squares might line up perfectly like this you know with each one um, i have an odd number of rows in my sleeve so they're not going to line up perfectly so what you can do is as you seam if you want, for example, this top part to line up, then you can line them up that way, and then it's going to be a little bit off, um, off centered as these two come, you know, line up with each other, or you can have it be a little bit offset and do it like this. I prefer to have the shoulder seam lining up with one of these sleeve seams like that, so that's how I decided to, to construct mine, but that is up to you how you want to line that up. Right, so it's time to join the sleeves. So you have seamed your sleeve into a tube like this. Okay, you've also measured for your arm opening. So this is the side of the sweater right here. We've got the, um, the shoulder seamed across the top and I have measured for my arm opening right here. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm folding my um, my sleeve here, um, which is a tube, into um, to line it up with the shoulder. So I'm just going to lay it in flat in half with one of the seams going across the top and I am going to line it up with the arm opening just like this. And what I'm going to do is make sure that the seam matches on the top. One of my flat seams matches on the top. Zoom in a little bit here. And I can join anywhere. I prefer to join back here at this seam and go up around the top and seam down underneath the armpit. You'll see it's going to line up about like that at the armpit, just halfway down the square and around and up the other side. So just lay that flat like that and do your flat slip stitch all the way around your arm opening to join the sleeve.
All right, my friends, we are getting there. So we just have the trim left to do around the sleeve cuffs and around the hem and the neckline of the sweater. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. So please take note that we are decreasing our hook size by one. So the rest of the cardigan was done in six and a half millimeter or whatever hook size it took to obtain the four inch uh, granny square gauge. So go down by one hook size. So I've gone down from a six and a half to a five and a half. And what that does is it just allows you to shape the trim a little bit, shape the sweater a little bit without having to do any special stitches like decreasing or anything. It just shapes it just a little bit by making the stitches smaller, kind of just brings, kind of just tapers it in just a little bit like that without having to change your stitch count. So go ahead and slip knot onto your hook and rejoin into any of these stitches along the sleeve cuff. Rejoin with a slip stitch and then a chain one. And for this very first row of the trim, we're simply going to single crochet all the way around. And I just wanted to do this beginning part with you just so that I can show you how to handle these um, these little intersections when you get to where you seamed the you flat stitch slip stitch seamed the granny squares together it adds kind of some complication right here which is really easy to handle but I just wanted to show you what you're going to do about placing stitches in that area as you go around so go ahead and do your based on where you joined go ahead and slip stitch your way all the way to one of those little intersections and I'll show you how to handle it. So as I approach that, just remember with our granny squares, we had two chains to make the corner of the granny square. You used one of the chains as you joined the granny square. You used one of those two chains. We're gonna use this other chain while we make the, the trim as we go around. So just go ahead and place a single crochet into that chain that you haven't used yet as you approach each of the corners of the granny square okay and then the next stitch you're going to make is right in the center of this final stitch this final flat slip stitch you're just going to go ahead and pop a single crochet right in the middle of that of that one okay and then the next stitch you'll make as you come over to this this corner of this adjacent granny square is you're going to make it in that other chain that you didn't use yet so again you used one of them as you were joining up this direction and there's another chain there in the corner that you didn't use so go ahead and make your next single crochet into that chain you want to make sure you're doing it under both under two loops you don't want to go all the way around it into the hole like this you want to actually make it under the two loops of the chain to make a nice clean trim here, okay? So then just carry on all the way around and repeat that um, same method as you as you approach each of the of the intersections here. And I'll meet you back at the start and show you what you're what we're gonna do about the second uh, round of the trim. All right, so I've made my way around to the start. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna skip over that chain that you made when you rejoined. I'll tighten it down a little bit. And you're gonna make a slip stitch to join that round. Okay, go ahead and chain one. And now for the second round and the third round of the trim, you're gonna be working through the back loop only. So you're not gonna turn, you're gonna continue going in that same direction. You slip stitch, you chain one, and you're gonna begin in that very next stitch through the back loop only. So here you've got both loops. We're working through just this back loop here. Okay, so you're going to simply single crochet through that back loop only. Mark my first stitch there again. Single crochet, back loop only, all the way around. And you are going to do that for two rounds. So for this one, which is the second round of the trim, and then for one more round where you'll come, come around on this one, you'll slip stitch, chain one, 
and do one more round through the back loop only. So I'm gonna go ahead and do both of those rounds and I'll meet you um, at the end and we'll take a look at what our sleeve cuff looks like. So I'll see you there. Right, I'm making it around on my second row of back loop only single crochet for the trim on the sleeve. So this is actually the third round of the sleeve. I'm making it all the way back to the end. And I am going to slip stitch into that first stitch of the round. So this was that chain. So I'm going to skip over that chain. I'm going to place a, a slip stitch into that very first stitch. Okay, and let's go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like. Go ahead and snip and pull that through. And you're going to fasten that off and pull it to the inside and weave it in on the inside. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I just feel like this is the perfect little trim for this feminine granny square sweater. And I'll tell you what, it took me a while <laughs> to decide. There was a lot of frogging on, on this one. And I even had to just put the sweater down at one point and come back to it because I just couldn't get it. I just couldn't get satisfied with it. And this one, I love it so much. I just think it's perfect. Okay, so now we are going to make our way on to the final... The final trim for the sweater, which is going to be for the um, the bottom hem and the the kind of the collar here, the inner the side the front sides and the neckline. So the method for that is the exact same that we just did for these sleeves. It's going to be three rows of single crochet. The first one is going to be through both loops all the way around. And then the second and third rows are going to be through the back loop only of the single crochet. So I'm not gonna bore you by re-showing you the method, but what I did wanna mention is where you're going to rejoin, okay? So if you are, um, this is the front of the sweater, it's hard for me to get it all in the video. If you're right-handed, you're gonna be rejoining down at the front bottom corner right here. And you're gonna be making your way this direction around the front, around the back, around this other front panel, straight away going up along the front edge, around the neckline, and back down to where you began, which is where you will slip stitch, chain one, and then go through the back loop only, single crochet, all the way around that same row, come all the way around, join with a slip stitch, chain one, back loop only, one more round. If you're left-handed, you're going to do that same thing, but you're going to start this way and go, you're going to start in this bottom corner here, which if you're wearing the sweater, I guess would be the bottom right corner and go this direction up back around here, two, three. Okay. So I, again, it's the same method for the, um, that you just did for the sleeves. So go ahead and get going on that and I will check in with you and see how it's going in a little bit here, but I think you're gonna have the hang of it. I'm working my way around for my first row of single crochet on the trim of the hem and I wanted to remind um, or to mention as you get to the corner, this is the, gonna be the, um, the front corner of the sweater. You're going to wanna place an increase a single crochet increase into both of those corner chains so that you can make this corner without it curling under. So I'm placing two single crochets in this first chain of the granny square corner, and I'm gonna place two single crochets into this second chain of the corner as well. So we're gonna do an increase and that'll keep that corner nice and, and clean without um, rolling under. So I just wanted to stop and check in on that. So go ahead and carry on with your edge and I will check on you as you finish that up. Okay, so I've made my way all the way around for my very first row of the trim for the hem and the neckline areas. So I'm making it to the end here and I'm at this, uh, this other corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and place an increase into that chain so that I don't curl in my, my front corner here. So I'm gonna go ahead and place two single crochets under this chain here. Okay, so there's one, there is two, right? 
So go ahead and join that first round with a slip stitch to that first stitch. All right. And there you have completed your first round of your trim. Okay, so now we're gonna carry on straight away with two final rows for our trim in the back loop only. So we're gonna go ahead and chain, we just slip stitched to join that very first round. We're going to chain one. And these next two rounds are also gonna go all the way around, but they're gonna be through the back loop only just like we did with our sleeves. So here we've got both loops. We're, checking, we're, we're taking up the, the back loop only through here. Pull up, single crochet. Okay, so that's your very first stitch of the second round of your trim around the main part of the body. And you're gonna do that, just carry on all the way around through the back loop only. All right, you're gonna go all around. You're gonna come back to this very, come around, 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 back to this very first stitch. You're going to slip stitch to join and chain one and do one more round. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish both of those rounds through the back loop only and I'll meet you back for our very last uh, join and we'll take a look at what it looks like at that point. So I'll see you there. All right, I'm making my final few stitches of the third row of my trim. Back loop only, single crochet. Okay, this is my final, this is my corner stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and make an increase in that stitch. Keep the edge nice and flat. Slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. Okay, go ahead and snip. And pull through. All right, let's take a look. We've got our trim. Three rows of single crochet. All right, you guys, there we have it. You've got your airy cardigan and it's now complete. I hope you enjoyed making this with me and that you love the cardigan as much as I do. Happy hooking. If this video was helpful for you, please click the like button below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to sign up on my website, offthebeatenhook.com, so we can keep in touch and where you'll be the first to know about new patterns, resources, and video tutorials. See you next time.